morning, everyone. We begin the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and I will read the entrance antiphon. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true, and hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Yes, Again, we enter into this mystery of Christ's love for us. So let us begin by acknowledging our sins and failings, seeking the Lord's generous gift of forgiveness. Let's continue to pray for ourselves and those who put their life on the line during this terrible time in our world, that the Lord may strengthen and bless them. And in doing this, we prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your cross and resurrection signal new beginning of peace and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a comfort for those who seek forgiveness and healing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us a new commandment that we love one another as you have loved us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the most high's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities heals all your ills, he redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The, the Lord, Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not ch always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. 
as far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, nor one dies, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle the accounts with his servants. And when he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. And since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. Now when the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Failing to fall into his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid the entire debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and began to and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have paid, had pity on your fellow servant, as I had pity on you? Then in anger the master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my Father in heaven do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then you pray your own sins will be forgiven. These are the words from the book of Sirach, which reminds us that forgiveness is deep and necessary part of our spiritual tradition handed down to us from our Jewish ancestors in the faith. And Jesus echoes this teaching when he gives us the words, Our Father, which he tells us to pray thus, Forgive us our transgressions as we forgive the transgressions of others. What a wonderful connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament, that the prophets of old and the Messiah, who is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Even St. Paul in his letter tells us, and I quote, if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or we die, we are thus with the Lord. Because it is our Lord who tells us to forgive. If we want to be his follower, his friend, one with him in the work of salvation, if we want to follow Jesus, then we must become people who forgive others, no matter what the offense they do to us. And Jesus is so clear that to follow him, we must suffer. So we must take up our own cross daily and follow him. 
and to forgive the trans transgressions of others can be a cross. But the sacrifice comes when we see in that individual the suffering of Christ and be imitative of those wonderful things that Christ taught us and left us. Even in St. Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is so clear in his teaching to us. Forgive everything from your heart. In other words, not just in words, but allow it to go much deeper and be sincere in that forgiveness, loving and compassionate in that forgiveness. We are not allowed to hold on to anything against anybody. And I find the most perfect example was on the cross. The two thieves between our Lord and only one had the courage to say, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And in the fullness of love, despite the pain and agony, he tells this poor man, you will be with me in paradise. What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful confession. What a wonderful act of faith. And Jesus teaches us we must go even further and help those who harm us, putting aside the old person and putting on the liberty of Christ. To follow Jesus, and we all know this is not easy, because he asks us to give up ourselves completely to him and to follow him. When the apostles accepted Jesus' invitation, follow me, I wonder if they understood the price that were paid in their yes. Many of them suffered death, but yet they were willing to put on the livery of Christ and follow him. Christianity will never be of comfort, even though we may have comfort from time to time. Because in Christianity, if we are imitative of Christ, we must carry our cross. We must see him in others. We must put aside the old person and put on Christ. So we ask ourselves, how do I relate to those around me? Not only close family and those friends who always have their arm around our shoulder, but each and every person we come in contact with. Are we people who seek to love and serve others? Do we seek to see Christ in others? Do we look for God's will in our own lives and also in the lives of others? We have to go beyond the facade because sometimes behind a smile can be much pain. Sometimes behind a smile can be deceit. So Jesus tells us I mean, we must be wise. Wise to the ways of the world so we do not be deceived. Jesus always pulls our attention back to God and to the way God wants us to live. And the scriptures are so clear. We are invited to see God in every aspect of our lives, the good times and the bad. And in those bad times, we find a refuge in Christ Jesus. He listens. That heart beats to console us. Those arms stretch out on the cross are all embracing. And at the heart of Jesus' teaching, at the heart of his own life, is the deep awareness of God's presence in all creation and in all peoples. And we must do the same. See in each person the image of Christ, the suffering Christ, the poor Christ, the hungry Christ. And like St. Francis of Assisi, boldly respond to their needs. Even in the agony on the cross, Jesus' heart beats with love for us. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Sin blinds us. It blinds us to God's goodness. It cuts off the sanctifying grace he wants to give us. And when we celebrate forgiveness in the sacrament of confession, the floodgates are open of Christ's sanctifying grace and his love for us. So in the final analysis, today and every day, we are invited to forgive and to follow Jesus in a way that gives witness to the glory of God. 
Are we willing to walk the way of Jesus? When we get up in the morning, what a wonderful question to ask ourselves. Am I going to invite Christ to walk with me? And in all that I do, all that I say, all that I am, I will bring the great glory to God through and with His Son, Jesus Christ, and Christ's mother, the other Virgin Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy and compassion, we offer him our prayers. For the church, may the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. For harmony and justice in our nation and across the world, May the Prince of Peace dwell in the hearts of all of his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are holding on to past hurts and grievances, may the Lord give them the grace to forgive. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, may the Lord fill us with love and truth and guide us in his ways of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in this time of the pandemic and for those who assist them with love and care, may the Lord's compassion and strength be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the deceased of the Knights of Columbus and for all of our departed relatives and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father of mercy and compassion, look beyond our sins and hear the prayers we offer you. For we offer them with contrite and repentant hearts. We ask that you hear the prayers that we offer, for we make them in the name of Jesus the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that which each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate a memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, Robert our Bishop Emeritus, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.